Hello and welcome to What's In It For Africa, the Inside the Issue show with me, Uzo Madu. On the show this month, we're going to be exploring the African interests involved in the EU aviation strategy. And to help us do so, we will speak to the Kenyan ambassador to the EU, Belgium and Luxembourg, His Excellency Johnson Weru. But we're going to start off by outlining the current state of affairs of the African and European aviation sector. In Europe, the aviation sector contributes 110 billion euros to the EU's GDP. And if we look at its wider effects, for example, how it contributes to industries like tourism, it's as large as 510 billion euros. Now, the European aviation sector also accounts for around 40% of the global aviation sector. However, the European aviation industry is facing increasing competition internationally, notably from Asia. Also, European airlines face some of the highest break-even load factors, which essentially means that they need more passengers in order to break even. European rates stand at around 65%, with African rates at around 54%. Now taking a look at the African aviation sector, it contributes approximately 73 billion euros to the continent's GDP and it's also expected to grow 5.3% by 2018 alone. But despite these growth predictions and leading aviation champions in Kenya, South Africa, Egypt and Ethiopia, which fly internationally, including to European destinations, still over 50% of the airlines that are banned from flying into the EU airspace for safety reasons are based on the African continent. Furthermore, European airlines are increasingly serving routes to key African destinations. Air France, for example, is the leading European carrier serving the African continent to over 34 destinations. Now let's talk about the EU aviation strategy itself. It was published back in December and it's really focused on improving European competitiveness in this sector. And the most interesting elements from the African interest perspective relate to the external aviation agreements, also fair competition and safety issues. External aviation agreements. Now, these are agreements with non-EU countries, and obviously the terms do depend according to the specific commercial interests of either party. However, the main intention is to increase the number of passengers, direct routes, and schedule flights in between the regions of the two parties. Now, the EU focuses on its strategy on partners in Asia, the Middle East, and also Central America. However, the strategy does not include a focus on African regions or countries. And on fair competition, specifically on subsidies and pricing, the EU wants to see more policy action at the international level. The EU is also looking into new legal measures in order to tighten the rules um, around non-EU airlines subsidising their services, but also pricing their services when they are operating in the EU airspace. This is particularly important important because subsidies in the aviation sector are more than common practice. Actually, according to the OECD, most, if not all countries, including those on the African continent, at one point or another, have provided or do provide funding to some of its aviation sector at certain parts of its value chain. Also, additional fair competition concerns include ownership and control rules. The EU would like to see these relaxed because it feels that the international framework includes too many restrictions on nationality and also control, which uh, takes away or disincentivizes non-EU nationals from investing in European aviation. And last, but by very no means least, safety. The European Commission will launch a review of all of its existing regulation on operating bans, but also on aviation accident investigations. Now, this will be particularly important for the more than 100 African airlines currently banned for safety reasons from the EU airspace. So you're all up to speed on the EU aviation strategy. 
Now let's move to the interview. Since Kenyan Airways is one of the leading African aviation operators, flying to over 60 international airports, including numerous on the European continent, we decided to speak to the highest ranking Kenyan official in town. We have the pleasure of sitting down and interviewing Kenyan Ambassador to the EU, Belgium and Luxembourg, His Excellency Johnson Weru. African governments have no capacity to subsidize airlines. They don't produce jet fuel, they don't produce aircraft, they don't even have the competences whatsoever to train the engineers on the ground. We are so disadvantaged. So we feel that if there is a way, yeah. we need affirmative action. I can tell you something about Embraer, the Brazilian uh, aviation company. They, they have decided to set up a, a, a regional center in Nairobi to uh, train our people on maintenance and uh, the servicing of these equipment of theirs that are flying all over Africa. Rather than taking them all the way uh, to Brazil, they are serviced centrally when their mileage is due. And that to us is a very important thing. What we have in Africa in terms of Airbus is not to that level. Mm. If an Airbus is due for review, it goes back to the manufacturers of Airbus, it is serviced and then brought back to Africa. Mm. Why can't we have that? That is what we will discuss when we meet with the uh, EU at the summit. I will ask affirmative and more progressive capacity building so that we can actually have a fair engagement, not just ferrying passengers. We need a bit more than that. What What can we do on the continent to really make sure that we have this common um, airspace? The, the answer lies, and thank you very much for that question, I think the answer lies in the integration mechanism. The regional integration uh, groupings that we have in Africa in West Africa, we have ECOWAS. In South Africa, we have uh, SADC. In East Africa, we have uh, EEC, East African Community. We have COMESA. All these groups have come up with a common protocol on aviation. For example, East Africa, where we are major players, we have the East African Civil Aviation Authority already in place, and which now promotes a common airspace policy among the East African, the five East African member states. In fact, if it were to go to fruition, I heard of my arrival here in Brussels, I was working on that. We had reached a position where we were going to declare all the domestic flights, all the flights between the five East African states, they were going to be designated as domestic flights. That would drastically reduce the cost of travel some Kenya is a big country, Tanzania is a big country. Mm -hmm. You find that from one point to another, from Dar es Salaam to Dodoma, is exactly longer, exactly longer than from Nairobi to Kampara. <laughs> so we were saying, if all these uh, borders were crops, so that we have a one common airspace, then the designation of a flight as international Mm. actually raises its charges and Kenya Airways is doing multiple flights about five to each of those capitals mm. much more to Dar es Salaam especially five to Kigali five to in fact almost ten to Entebbe almost hourly but they are all international flights because they are de sneaking from one capital to another it is not like Brussels to uh, Berlin or to Madrid so what we are saying is this we have a common immigration policy now. You don't need a visa to enter any East African country. All what you need is an ID to prove that you are from East Africa. You can cross without any passport, without anything. That is the next step in terms of flights. You just fly. You don't need to walk through customs and immigration. And the flights will be lower. Our rising middle income earners are the ones that are driving aviation. Mm. If you look at my country, Kenya, there are so many companies doing aviation and they have a lot of business flying all over. 
they are ready to take off. So once this is done, we will now move to a similar level of cooperation between the regional groups. I would love to see a similar protocol being signed between SADC and EAC. I would drive or fly to Jobak every other time I feel like. South Africans would do the same. They would come to Nairobi and to Mombasa and everywhere else. Nigerians, now the most popular in the Africa, they would fly everywhere they want without restriction. That's what we want. We don't need to be we don't need any incentive from Europe yeah. to travel within Africa. That is our continent. Before others come, it is us to travel within yes. and yes. grow our own market. Then we can negotiate on the same table. Yeah. That is what the Europeans did. Before the EU came into place, it was difficult, very difficult. So there you have it. It seems like there is a clear focus on what's going on on the continent in its own backyard in terms of liberalising the African airspace. And it's a major priority for the African aviation sector. However, it is relevant and very important to keep a watchful eye on how African aviation can potentially gain some more of the market share for the EU Africa corridors, but also how to navigate potential new EU rules on safety and how the EU might influence international rules on competition. If you're interested in learning more from the company perspective, please visit the website as we have a special guest blog penned by Michael Bentele, who is the South African Airways Head of Europe. Thank you for watching the Inside the Issue show. Until next month, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, also like our Facebook page, and remember to visit the website for the brand new blog. My name is Uzo Madu for What's In It For Africa.